Welcome to Empower Coaching. Discover how to reinvent yourself, find self-empowerment and live a more positive and fulfilling lifestyle. Empower Coaching combines mental and physical fitness to help you connect the dots to unveil a more confident, energized and empowered version of you. So if you're ready, let's get into today's episode. Hello and welcome back to Empower Coaching with Emma. It is my favourite month this month. So we are in February and it's my favourite month because it is the month of love. And I'm talking self-love, which is what this show is all about today. Self-love and self-care. It's also my favourite month because it's my birthday month. So I am now 31 years old how the time has flown. I can't really say much for my the year of my 30 which I thought was going to be the biggest year yet. Um, Yeah that all went downhill didn't it really 2020. So um, I'm going to celebrate 2021 and the year of turning 31 instead because why not? (laughs) So yes my favourite month is the month of love and we're going to be talking about the self-love um, and I also just want to add in there, if you didn't hear on my last podcast, I have now launched the very exciting Embodied by Empower Coaching, which is all about self-confidence and expressing your self-confidence and representing you, being all about you. Um As a way to celebrate this new and exciting launch throughout the month of February, I am running a competition over on my Instagram page, Empower Coaching UK. And in that competition, you've got a chance to win full access to the Shred 4-week program. Full access. Um, You will also get the Shred Nutrition to go alongside that to fully maximise your results. You'll also get a perfume of your choice from um, the Confident You fragrance range. And you will also get a free makeup set as well. So a really, really lovely prize all about building self-confidence and representing your confidence. Um, and you can enter that competition over on my Instagram page, Empower Coaching UK. All the details are there. I will leave a link in the bottom of the show notes on today's show as well. Um, so you can just click on and fly on over and join in the competition. Also, a really big thank you to everyone who has been supporting this podcast, downloading, sharing, um, giving shout outs. Honestly, it means so much to me that when I'm under this little tent of mine in my living room, doing what I absolutely love, that it is going a long way and it has a purpose and it is reaching people. And that is why I do it. And I'm so glad that it's been able to um have an impact on so many of you as well and support you through this time so thank you very much for sending the love back um it's felt and it's recognized okay so into today's show all about self love the month of love self-care is so so important and it falls under the category of loving yourself and respecting your body and the way in which you do this there's so many different ways. Um, I I believe that self-care is made up of the three fundamentals that Empower Coaching is built on, and that is health, fitness, and well-being. All of these three things, I believe, are what make up self-love and self-care. And so included in that, um, we, you know, we're, we're talking about exercise for your fitness. We're talking about nutrition for your health and supplements. So inside out health. Um, and then also we're talking about your mental fitness for well-being. So doing things um, that relax you, doing things that you enjoy and things that just bring about general positivity um, to make you live a more... Um, fulfilling life. Today we're going to really just be focusing on the exercise part of it and because honestly like each one of those segments health fitness and well-being and they all make up self-love 
but they're all a podcast in themselves, definitely. Um, so I'll probably focus on just one at a time. And we're going to start today with um, using exercise as a form of self-care. So it's a well-researched fact that exercise promotes physical well-being. Um, but more and more studies are now indicating that consistent, moderate exercise throughout the week um, also aids in mental well health. And luckily, this is something that is being promoted a lot more um, nowadays than it used to be. So from stress reduction, improved focus, memory retention, God, don't we need it, um, increased positive moods, um, exercise really does prove to be one of the best natural supplements for mental health um, and one of the best activities that you can engage in for self-care. And it's also something that you can so easily access um, and that you can do just do at any point in your life and at any time. So how is exercise classed as being self-care? Well, I've kind of briefly just touched on it then. Um, I guess when some people imagine self-care activities, they think of things that are fun, uh, relaxing, and that help them and the, the mind and the body just to unwind, such as like a nice bubble bath or binge watching the favourite show on Netflix. Um, but most people don't imagine that huffing and puffing through a challenging cardio workout is classed as self-care but in reality it really is self-care is an activity that just helps to reduce stress and promotes mental health and cognitive functioning as well so that's the brain functioning and um, by by this definition exercise is a perfect form of self-care it's everything included under one little umbrella um, how does exercise affect mental health? Again, something that is being promoted a lot more um, and I'm really, really happy to see that because it really is one of um, the key elements of Empower Coaching. When you engage in a challenging workout, it increases your heart rate, right? That, this is something that you'll have noticed if you've already done that, I'm sure. Um, this in turn prompts the release of endorphins, which are better known as the happy hormones. Um, these happy hormones, these endorphins, they help you to feel calm and they help you to feel happy. And in fact, consistent moderate exercise is as, as effective antidepressant medications at reducing symptoms of depression. So it is as effective as an effective antidepressant medication for reducing symptoms of depression. How amazing is that? Exercise also helps reduce the symptoms related to anxiety. Uh, and this is because it relaxes the muscles that have become knotted and tightened due to stress. Now, do not get me wrong here. If you are heavily, on, not even heavily really, if you are into your um, weightlifting and training or just that you exercise um, moderate to intense on a regular basis, then actually the exercise can um, promote knots in the body as well um, but there are certain ways that exercise can also release and um, and un untighten the knots as well um, so if you've got knots and a lot of tightness in your shoulders and in your back and your neck that's due to stress from holding yourself tight and um, that there is certain exercise that can actually help to relax that as well um, and exercise helps the mind and the body just to become more balanced and, and to work in tandem, um, you know, which is just fantastic. That's what we all all aim for, isn't it, I suppose? Um, so, yeah, that's how it affects your mental health. How much exercise you should do for optimal mental health and self-care? Um, there isn't, uh, you know, I can ask you how long is the piece of string. There isn't, there isn't a definitive answer there because it is completely down to you as a unique individual and um, the goal here is that we are to improve and maintain our physical and mental health whilst exercising so you don't if you're starting out you don't want to be just going out all like too strong um, and just absolutely going for it and nailing it and um, especially if you've been sedentary for a while or you're new to exercising uh, just a little one there. You should always consult your physician before beginning any, any exercise regimen as well. Um, but a general rule of thumb 
um, is to attempt uh, exercise at least 150 minutes per week. Um, if you're doing activities like walking or swimming um, and about 75 minutes a week if you're engaging in more challenging activities such as running and weightlifting um, and they are guidelines from the WHO, the WHO uh, which we've, we've heard a lot about recently but um, not with regards to exercise necessarily. Um, and that's a World Health Organization, by the way. I realized I just used my slang then and didn't give it <laughs> any meaning to those who are like questioning. So there we go. Now, what exercise is best for self-care? Well, the best exercise for self-care is the one that makes you happiest. Okay, so whatever Sandra's doing and whatever Jonathan's doing and whatever Kate is doing, it, just because that exercise is making them feel good and making them feel happy and that's what they do for their, their self-care doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So you have to choose an exercise that makes you feel the happiest. You're more likely to stick with an exercise regimen that you enjoy. So find an activity that makes you feel happy and that you can work at a consistent pace, right? So if you love swimming, go and find a local pool, do some laps um, or take an aqua aerobics class. Do they even still exist? I mean, I, I once one time wanted to be an aqua aerobics instructor because I just think it would be awesome. But I don't know if that's still a thing anymore because last time I went into a swimming pool was a long time ago. Um, and probably for a lot of you, actually, they have been closed a lot recently. Um, but yeah, if swimming is your thing, um, outdoor swimming, you know, if you're brave enough to give that one a go, go ahead and do it. Um, if you love running, find a local um, running club when we can do that kind of thing again. Um, or just go for a run around the block, go and find a nice park, um, anywhere that you are able to go and run. Um, honestly, engaging in physical activity, it doesn't have to be um, this massive feat, this massive challenge, okay? It just needs to be something that um, will help with social interaction if you, if you can. At the minute, I do believe we can exercise with one other person. Um, and of course, it's something that will, just anything that will keep you interested and keep you motivated to stick at it and not just drip off after a couple of weeks in. It should never, ever feel like a chore. Now, starting a new um exercise routine it might be difficult at first because it's all about that adaption um so but instead of viewing it as a i have to do something so instead of viewing it as a have to find something um sorry as a have to find something that you enjoy and that you that you can realistically stick with um the more you engage in and repeat in that activity the more it'll just become part of your self-care routine and it will just naturally it will be something that you just naturally um, are attracted to doing. Um, so let's have a little look at the different types of exercises that can actually help you to feel more positive and healthy. So as mentioned, exercise releases endorphins. And just a little one on that. These are um, also known as your happy hormones. And these are neurotransmitters that create a sense of euphoria and alertness, just in case you did not know. A little science fact there for you. Um, so the production of the stress hormones like cortisol also decreases with exercise. Um, so simple exercises um, can really help to regain control of just your whole bloody entire life. Um, equipment and gym memberships not required. Everyday activities are enough to live a healthier life. Um, every exercise should be viewed as an opportunity to strengthen your mind and body. So let's have a little look at some of the different things that you can do. Walking outside, let's just start dead simple. It really is the simplest form of exercise that there is. And there is very little thought that has to go into walking. Okay, unless you're like me and you trip over every single thing that's in your way. Um, but in general, it doesn't require much attention and the activity doesn't have to feel like a chore either. So a walk outside every day can alleviate stress um, by massive, massive amounts. Um, it will also promote more neural activity in the brain. 
Um, it's believed that blue skies help to relax the brain. Now, it is February and in general, it's a bit of a dull month. It's either snowing and icy over here from the UK or it's absolutely pissing down with rain. So the blue sky can be a little bit limited, but the fresh air, the fresh air that you will get from that walk, um, the, when your brain receives that fresh air from the from the outside it promotes circulation as well and improved circulation can obviously increase your cognitive abilities so a lot can be said for just going for a walk now that can just be around the block it can be around a local park and um, if you've got a dog walking the dog is classed as it maybe just go a little bit longer than you usually would go for a couple of extra walks a day honestly it can be just the most simplest thing to do now hiking um is a little bit different and um so what you can do for hiking the the difference between hiking and walking is walking you can literally just open your front door go for a walk that is walking um hiking we're talking like big hills mountains um so this is why hiking just offers an opportunity to get in touch with nature and there is a very 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 strong connection between the human body and the natural environment um, and i honestly i speak from experience with that one as well um you know there is nothing that quite beats um just going up into the mountains or the hills and just being surrounded by that nature and soaking in um, and breathing in all of that fresh air from up high in the hills honestly um, or even if you're just hiking on low ground through forests just being in nature is just amazing amazing um, and it just does wonders that is my go-to when I'm you know in very stressful situations if I'm able to um, the hiking is definitely my go-to um, so the human body is supposed to be neutrally charged however contact with any surface besides the bare ground can create a negative charge now this is going by um readings that i've come across so this isn't my personal opinion but there is a lot of research into this so if you want to delve into that area then do but i do feel like it deserved a mention in here um, because there is a lot of research that goes into the, into that um, connection between the bare ground and having an, um, a negative or positive charge in the body. Um, so they say that the charge accumulates over a lifetime and it doesn't leave the body until it encounters an opposing charge. So isn't that mad? Um, so hiking can help to relieve those charges because when you walk on the ground with your bare feet, this displaces the negative charge. Now, what I will say is I can't remember any time <laughs> where I've gone and walked up a hill or a mountain or through a forest barefoot. Um, like I say, there's some very good research into it. So maybe one day I will go and maybe give that a go with the car nearby and a fresh pair of socks and wipes. <laughs> Uh, yeah it would have to be somewhere quiet as well because <laughs> I reckon there'll be some odd looks if I start walking around like my local national trust park and I'm barefoot and everyone else is in their wellies and, and walking boots um but I do think you know it's it's probably worth a try um and they say that as a result of doing this your sinuses clear up your energy is increased and your immunity improves um so uh, to be honest guys i mean what are we all waiting for let's just run outside now in our bare feet <laughs> um so if that's not for you there is also things like yoga and yoga and meditation are commonly practiced around the whole freaking world yoga is constantly on the rise um, and there's a bloody good reason for it. it is the best best known um way for healing and relaxing the effects on the body that's yoga and meditation um, both of which use a variety of techniques to improve breathing so that's where you know we're really getting at here is um you know the 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 actual breathing element of the exercise um is where we get that relaxation from there's a lot of connection between your breath work um and how you 
are mentally and how you can relax yourself with that um, again something that we can delve into another time um, many of the symptoms that are related to stress and anxiety and anxiety can actually be alleviated with improvements in your breathing I mean if you think about it now if you sit there and you just think right when was how are you breathing now are you breathing deep purposefully are you short breath you know are you panic breathing how are you breathing um it's very rare that we actually take big deep breaths in through the nose out through the mouth um and because of of not doing that we're not able to get the circulation going around um properly and we're not allowing ourselves just to take that time just to relax the mind and the soul so anytime the body releases stress hormones um the the sorry i've lost my train of thought well what was i talking about <laughs> the body releasing stress hormones that's it so um every time that this happens it can result in rapid breathing so you'll notice whenever you start to feel a bit anxious or a bit stressed you breathe and it starts to go a little bit more rapid and it's a lot more short of breath um but if your breathing can be controlled and if you can take those deep, slow and controlled breaths, then these feelings of stress uh, stress and anxiety become a lot more manageable. And I, I will give you that as an activity the next time that you start to feel yourself getting quite worked up over something. Just take a minute or two to really home in on your breathing, really focus on it. Take deep breaths, control the breaths by counting um, and you and let me know how how that feels for you and how that changes it because i guarantee that it will alleviate those feelings of stress and anxiety another benefit of yoga is of course increased confidence because yoga focuses on the development of the core muscles um, and improving these muscles can lead to a better posture um, and having a better posture you know correlates with having um better self-confidence and it's true. So again, another little action for you. Um, really think about how you walk around because I know I'm a victim for it until I actually start paying attention to my body and being mindful of how I'm holding myself. A lot of the time we hold ourselves and we bring our shoulders forward and our heads are down ever so slightly. Core is very, very relaxed. Um, as soon as you start to change that, as soon as you pull those shoulders back, you bring up your chest, your eyes are forward, your chin is lifted, instantly you have that feeling of confidence, right? So it's like if someone was to stand in front of you now and say, stand confident, well, you would just do it naturally, wouldn't you? You'd just do that action. You'd pull your shoulders back and you would stand tall with your chest out and your eyes forward and your chin lifted, holding your core tight. And just that in itself. So that is quite a powerful thing in itself. I mean, if you could really, really, really try hard just to spend more time walking around and being mindful of how you walk and changing your posture to being that way, that in itself can do wonders for your confidence. Um, but yes, having a strong core is is really beneficial to be able to do that um, because it will help with, with your better posture and it'll help you just to naturally do that. Um, another um, form of exercising, which is my personal go-to for self-care and self-love is weightlifting. Now, some people are probably thinking, what? <laughs> We've gone from yoga, like chill, relaxation deep breathing controlling of the movements to weightlifting but yes um weightlifting can increase the production of testosterone now some people especially females get a little bit scared by that word it's such a manly word i don't want to increase the production of testosterone i don't want to look manly ladies please it does not work like that if that's how you are f currently thinking okay um do you need a lot, a lot of testosterone in your body if you're a female to actually start to look manly? So we all have testosterone in us. Um, it's just we have slightly less than males. We just don't produce it at quite high um, quantities in males. Um, but testosterone is known to inhibit the production of cortisol and regulate hormonal levels. 
Okay, so the body also releases a surge of endorphins during the vigorous exercise as well. So it's not just about the testosterone, but um, it's also that release, that surge of endorphins um, during vigorous exercise. And that is what weightlifting is. So, you know, vigorous exercise could be HIIT, it could be high intensity interval training, but also lifting heavy weights. Um, weightlifting also improves physique. To be honest, that's the sole reason why I, I initially got into weightlifting, um, as in like my first month or so of weightlifting back in the baby days. I got into it purely for aesthetic reasons. I, I was educated on how I could change and shape my body just by lifting weights um, and that I could actually control my physique. What? Yes, I could control my physique. Um, so that's how I originally got into weightlifting. Now, I wouldn't say that is the best way, but that's what some people do and that is completely okay. It is fine to use it for that. Um, but yeah, so obviously, if you are able to change your physique with weightlifting, then that's going to uh, help to create a great sense of self-esteem for some people as well. Um, there's also the discipline um, aspect of weightlifting, which is pretty damn key to be honest um weightlifting requires a huge amount of discipline it's not like you can just do the odd session every now and again it takes structure it takes motivation it takes dedication and um, there's a, a huge mental aspect in there as well um and the discipline that's gained from weightlifting it can help to make other tasks much easier in life just because it's that's the process that it's teaching you it's teaching you to stay committed and to stay dedicated to something um so really you know the benefits of weightlifting it can just be transferred to any aspect of life um because you're you're just building on those skills so that's some of the ways in which exercise can help to um help with your self-care routine so like i say this uh, podcast itself was really just mainly focusing on exercise for self-care but there are so many different ways obviously um that self-care falls under um as mentioned at the very start you know it's it's not just exercise you know there's health your nutrition um the fitness and exercise and then there's also um your well-being as well and looking after your mental health and having that mental fitness um and yeah so that's also because you know we are in the month of the love um you know it's also another reason why i wanted to launch embodied by empower coaching um because we work so hard on doing all of these physical things with our bodies um having these routines in place with what we eat but do you know what sometimes there are tiny little what i like to call mini wins that we can do so easily every single day that just help to to make us feel like we are really taking care of our bodies that we are respectful of our bodies and that we love our bodies and ourselves um and that's really what embodied is all about that's what it really focuses in, is on it's all about expressing your self confidence and representing you having the confidence to just be you um, the three elements of embodied are confident you beauty so that's the makeup line because come on let's be real okay let's not fake it here when we put on that red lipstick right how confident do you feel okay I mean yeah okay it's got to be the right shade but still red lippy okay instant confidence booster right um the confident you fragrance I love my perfumes, absolutely love my perfumes. And one of the main reasons why is because when I find that fragrance that I really do connect with, that I smell and I think, that's me. Um, and I find that strong flavour and I can find a confident smell, a confident flavour. And when I spray that on myself, I'm just like yep i'm gonna fucking take on today because i smell good <laughs> it might sound stupid granted but seriously just spraying some really powerful strong sexy perfume on onto your body at the start of the day 
um, it can just give you that little mini boost of confidence that you need and every little bit helps right there's also then the confident use health supplements so it's all fair and well um you know keeping in the calories down or increasing the calories whatever your goal is um you know looking at your macros and everything and doing your exercising and all that kind of stuff um but sometimes you know it, life can just be a little bit too busy that we can overlook the micronutrients so um you know when we're looking at things like your fruits and your veggies trying to fit those in um there's there's a lot of um areas in which we can end up overlooking um our micronutrients and that's where health supplements come into it so um there's a really great range of health subs in there um that you literally can just take within the instant um without having to worry about it, without having to cook anything. Um, absolutely do not replace food. Um, they are just there to help promote and to make sure that your body is getting the nutrition that it needs, that it's fulfilled um, and that you are respecting it by supplying it with self-care and self-love. Um, so yeah, just on that one, once again, as mentioned at the start of this podcast, there is currently a competition um, over there, which is in connection with this very exciting launch of Embodied. Um, and that's over on my Instagram page, Empower Coaching UK. So hop on over there for the full details of the competition. Once again, thank you so, so much for tuning into this podcast, for sharing it, for reaching out to me and giving me your feedback for letting me know how much this is helping you and supporting you. It goes a whole long way. It really does. I don't get paid for this, okay? I sit under here for half an hour, sweating my tits off because I've made some sofa den with the world's heaviest blanket, trying to create the best sound experience for you guys. Um, You know, and I do it because I love it. I do it because I just love to help people to support people just to help them find the best version of themselves and just to build up strong confident people okay um that's why i do it so when i get that feedback when i get the love back it just means so much to me it really does so yeah thank you again I'm going to leave it there um, and let you guys crack on with your weekend. Thanks again for tuning in and I will be back with you next week continuing the, the month of love here on Empower Coaching. I've been Emma, I'm here to empower you. See you next week, bye.